love these. It's Tilly. Um, I woke up a little while ago. My partner is still staying here with me for this week. And, uh, but we've been sleeping upstairs, so he was snoring heavily and very much deep asleep. So I decided to sneak down here and take some video time and time to read my tarot cards for the day, which are kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> but I won't bore you with that. Um, first of all, I wanted to say, Shanti, I just got done watching your video. And I'm really, I'm really sorry to hear that your physical body is not feeling well. And I hear you with the whole, like, when you decide to fast, it seems like your body either is totally on board with that decision and helps you out by making you get sick so you don't want to eat anything, or, you know, the opposite. It's totally not on board and will not let you fast no matter what you try. So, um... I'm sorry that you're not feeling well, and your insight about dealing with your current um, stressors in, you know, the family, I think was really good. I'm glad you said all that. I needed to hear that too. Um, too often we get caught up in this game playing thing with family, and it's not, you know, families are not perfect. They're going to have a lot of stress and problems. It's just the way that it's the nature of human beings who are, I mean, I don't mean it in a negative way, but who are forced to live together. You know what I'm saying? And even not, not just together physically in the same house, but sharing blood, sharing life experiences, sharing so much. I think that um, you know, it's one of those, the family unit is where mo so much of our stress, but also so much of our happiness can come from, you know, it's kind of like love and hate, what, is, there's a thin dividing line there, you know, but, um, both are using very passionate, strong emotions, you know, um, <laughs> They come from, you know, the same place. And I thought what you said about, you know, remembering to practice what you preach, but also, you know, to be that um, person that is not going anywhere. Um, you'll be there when things change. Um, and, you know, I think that's really important. And I'm really glad to hear you say that about your daughter, so. Um, I wanted to share a couple things, let's see. So last night, um, yesterday was a weird day. I mean, I feel like that medicine is now fully out of me. I think it is. The last dose that I took, it's been, I want to say like, 36 hours at least so and it was it was a low dose that I was on but I did um, call the psychiatrist I got to speak with her yesterday and I told her what was going on and she was like no that's that's an adverse reaction you know unfortunately that's just not this medicine is not gonna work out if you're having those symptoms so you know, and I asked her, well, do you think, I mean, you know, I don't want to give up too soon, really. And I do fear that I make snap judgments when I go on a new medicine. Like the first sign of um, any weird feeling I run. But it's because I've been through a lot of really scary shit on medication. And I don't ever want to go back to, say, how effects are affected me. Um, I was younger, I was 18, when I went on effects, so it's been, it's been 10 fucking years, damn. Oh, um, I feel old. <laughs> but, um, I don't want 
I'm so afraid of that, um, not realizing that my entire body and mind are being altered by this, by this medication that I'm totally trusting and thinking is doing me wonders, and then later on realizing, oh my god, no it isn't, look at me, like, I'm not even recognizable to myself anymore, like, this, you know, that, that medicine just made me, um, oh, it would be a miracle if that picture was still sitting here, even though I don't remember ever putting it anywhere else. Okay, sorry guys, I just wanted to see, there was a picture that was sitting around here. This is Tilly's ADD, I guess. <laughs> um, and it's not sitting here anymore, so I'm just gonna give that up and not keep searching on camera. But, um, there was a picture that I found of me from that period of time when I was working, um, as a... Get this. This is how far I've fallen. I was working as a the assistant teacher in a three-year-old classroom in a preschool. That's me, assistant teacher. That's what I was at one time, and I I did really well at it for me. I mean, looking at the picture that I found, I look kind of disheveled, frumpy, disorganized. I didn't know how to dress at all, you know, but, um, I had some shit together, you know, a lot more than now. <laughs> Something is in my mouth over here on my tongue, um, feels like, um, it, it hurts, so that's why I'm, like, I'm kind of talking without closing I don't know. I'm talking weird and kind of quiet because there's something in my mouth that hurts. I don't know what it is. It feels kind of like um, one of those canker, canker sores. Anyway, I, I want to get to what I wanted to share um, in this video. Okay, um, the counting um, of disruptive thoughts or intrusive thoughts thing. I don't know if that is a technique that is used in any kind of like CBT or DBT or anything like that. I was kind of browsing some some of that stuff last night on my phone. I didn't realize that there's a lot of mental health apps um, free available that you can put on your phone and use um, in helping yourself recover from these things. Um, but anyway. <coughs> Counting intrusive thoughts, um, sort of like keeping just a tally as they happen, um, is kind of incredible. Um, I don't know why I started doing that. I really don't. I don't remember. No one suggested it to me. I just kind of started doing it out of curiosity, maybe. And um, so last night, did we watch two movies last night? We watched this funny stoner comedy called Friday. It was funny. Um, I said that already. And we, yeah, just did some things. And um, I was counting for each, like, activity or whatever, how many um, intrusive thoughts that I had. And throughout the time of the, enti of the whole movie, where I was, like, kind of, like, forced to just be still and be, you know, still, like, keep my mind occupied on one thing, which is where a lot of times I get fucked up with intrusive thoughts, um, and that's why I have trouble watching movies, or doing one thing at a time instead of multitasking and doing a million things not as well at a time. So, 28 was the number, I think. I think it was 28 for that movie. 28 intrusive thoughts um, and I noticed that when I am counting them in my mind I'm seeing the mental image that's disturbing me but I'm seeing the number that I'm up to 
like almost I'm seeing the number stamped over the image in my mind and then it just kind of slides by and so I'm like whoa all right that's kind of powerful and I don't know if anyone else has ever tried to do that before or if that's a thing um, if it, I don't know try it if you have trouble with um, triggering thoughts that just come up in your head at you know inopportune times or whatever just try doing that for a little while and get sort of like do it like kind of intensively for a few days or whatever and see if that becomes helpful to you um because it's very odd it was it's like the that stamping out of the original disturbing image and then just seeing like in my mind seeing like a number and then just throwing it out it was really interesting because it didn't continue to affect me all I did was you know I would there would be a scene on the movie and there's you know now after my traumas every movie has triggers in it every TV show has triggers in it everything in life has triggers in it for me and I can't change the entire world around me, you know the entire world and I don't want I don't want to just give the reins of my life completely over to this PTSD thing you know this monster um, I want to become healthy of mind and so anyway you know whatever I can do to get there but really it's it's weird just it's weird how you find things sometimes that just work for you or seem to but anyway so like everything is triggering there's triggers everywhere not everything is triggering there are triggers everywhere and I can't realistically unless I decide that's it I'm going to become like a hermit and just but then I would be alone with my own mind all the time too which there's more triggers there you know so anyway just kind of in my mind I would see or hear something like in this movie and it would bring an image in my head that I did that was anxiety producing and I would just go one one kind of look up reset blink whatever put it aside it's gone and that was really helpful and <clears throat> um, there were some you know and this was real mindfulness I think because um, I was kind of, but I was able to like watch a movie interact with my partner and not not lose it completely and that was on very little sleep as well so I'm kind of proud of myself that I didn't just totally fall apart yesterday um, but that really is helping me um, to just but anyway I noticed something it's the same thoughts so many different triggering statements um, or scenes in movies or just anything you know stimuli from the outside so many things are triggers w words they bring these intense images into my mind and they cause me to either react emotionally which is rare these days or dissociate and I want to not dissociate so much I do it f so frequently though when I'm with other people you know and I don't want that because then I can't remember my experiences with other people and I'm the one that forgets that we watched this movie you know I'd be like oh I've never seen that movie before and then my partner would be like what the hell you just forget everything like you know does anything we do together mean anything to you you know that kind of thinking and I understand that I would probably feel the same way if you know he you know seemed to just not remember anything that would that would hurt me a little if I didn't understand it 
So, anyway, I'm working on trying to be more present and in the moment. And, you know, this, this sort of tallying as I go thing is really kind of working because it's really replacing the image with like a big visualization of like a big stamp with a number, you know, and throwing that in the bin. And, um, but some of the really intense ones, every time I hear the word intense, not every time, sometimes, like when I'm talking about this, it's weird, okay, because the one that kept returning to me is tents, tents, camping in tents, okay. So there was definitely a scene in this movie, um... No, it was, the, yeah, we did watch two movies, because the first one was a newer one, and it was really funny, and it was called, um, Role Models. Yes. See, there we go. Usually, I can't even remember. Um, that one, there was, like, you know, this whole, like, camping trip scene, extended scene, and one of the tents looked so much like a tent that I remember from my past and um, that particular set of triggering memories are sad ones. Um, un there's a lot of unresolved sadness and grief that I have about the time that I spent in the woods. Um, and I guess that one, you know, I counted that one, and I knew that I couldn't look at the screen, and there was really no reason to force myself to look at that tent on the screen, because I know, okay, yeah, it's it's the same color, size, shape, same type of tent. And, um, sorry, I knew that, didn't need to keep looking at it. But, you know, I counted that one as more than one because, like, five seconds went by and it was still there. And it just stuck in my head and, you know, it made, made a tear or two fall out of my eye, but, you know, I kind of went by, like, five second intervals, like, okay, this is tr triggering thought number seven. You know, and the stamp thing's not working. Okay, eight. Let's try this again. You know, and you know, then the scene changed, and maybe my partner said something silly that snapped me out of it. But you know, it's interesting because along with counting the intrusive thoughts, I'm realizing that they're repeating. There's certain ones that repeat a lot, and it's really not that many. You know, there's a ton of triggering words or triggering phrases or whatever things that trigger these images, but they're all the same couple of things that I see. And those those images in my mind, they kind of vary in intensity. And so things from, for instance, going to jail. Now, I went to jail I was in solitary confinement for a crime that has now been proven that I did not commit and that actually did not happen. Blah blah blah. That though is less triggering to me right now than thinking about the time leading up to it. Okay, and to me that means, okay, that the intense fear from the arrest and the um, being in jail and being on house arrest and not knowing what my future held and then having to be led on for like a year and a half in this case and then finally having the truth come out it did fuck with my brain it just was like a continual brain rape I'm sorry to use that word but um, but I've done extensive work with myself on trying to reframe the way I think about it. Um, and it's further away from me now, and I realize that there's a lot in life that I can control in that arena. I can control with probably like, 
I don't, I don't, I don't know what, how much, how much, how, like, how percentage-wise, I want to say, like, 95%, I can control if I'm going to get randomly picked up by cops and arrested again. Okay? It's incredibly unlikely that a freak thing like that is going to happen again, and I do know that. And I know, too, that I have the power to live my life in a way that is not going to make it so that that's a risk, you know? And so, you know, I have a lot of control in that area and the memories of, of being arrested and put in jail and all that, they're horrible memories. They bring back all kinds of different emotions, but I feel like I've worked out it's like I've thought about it so much and worked on it so much that it's like sanded to a little bit more of a dull blade, you know, than other things are. And I guess that's how I know what I need to really work on, you know. It's really grief memories that, um, that I get stuck in and that are that take more than five seconds to pass, you know, things that bring back a lot of sadness. Um, don't really know how to resolve all that grief. There's a really great book by this author named C.S. Lewis, um, traditionally Christian author, wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, so he's a good writer and he does actually have some really kick-ass stuff to say but i know that a lot of people are really turned off if they are not christian of the christian faith themselves or whatever um by uh christian authors and whatnot which is very bigoted if you ask me and i'm one of those people <laughs> So I'm calling myself a bigot, but there's this book called um, is it on grief or just grief? I don't remember. By C.S. Lewis, and it's this little book, very little, very li easy read. So many, it's like I have like almost every word highlighted because I read that book right after I got out of jail, and I was released on house arrest here, and I was like on the brink of passing from, you know, the denial phase, the happy little singing, um, totally clueless way that I was for the first little bit. I was sort of on the brink of that, going into, holy shit, this happened, and look at everything around me. My whole life is, is just leveled you know, and that realization was coming, and my dad had let me use or read that book from his office, and it's an, it's very poignant, and it's one of those books that makes you fucking sob your eyes out because it's a it's a diary that this author kept after his wife died, and he was searingly honest about how he was feeling day to day, but not so much just day to day, searingly honest about how he felt in general about his wife who had just passed. And there's negative feelings, positive feelings, there's grief, there's joy, there's everything. He was just, and it was, it was awesome to read that and I think that helped me with the whole being very transparent and being very clear about feelings and whatnot, it's important that they stay up, that they don't get all tangled up like a bunch of cords. I'm looking at that right now, a huge mess of cords. Um, but that they're separated and identified and dealt with, and um, I think that helps me a lot then. But anyway, I guess maybe I could reread that book, I don't know, but grief is just the thing that I have a lot of trouble with, so... That's kind of, I'm identifying that grief is a problem, is one of the remaining problems for me, I should say. So yeah, this is getting so long, so I'm going to cut this off now, but anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for watching if you did. <laughs>